Hi, and welcome to the History Lessons in the Dupedia World. Today's lesson is going to be a bit different from what we've been seeing till now, only because of its content. It is still part of life for ancient Romans, and it was part of the city. And from Pompeii, we have exceptional examples. We're going to talk about brothels and erotic art. So here I do have to stop and give you a notice. If it's the case that this kind of material will offend you or bother you, please just skip to the next lesson. There will be some depictions of erotic art that was found in Pompeii in this lesson. So please, if it's something you do not want to see, just close this one and continue with the rest of the lessons. The reason why I'm including this, it is a part of the life of ancient Romans. We cannot just elude and exclude this part of daily life. And we have to say that Pompeii, thanks to its conditions, is incredible with what has been found. These findings were a surprise because you normally don't have uh, either this kind of material or any paintings or not really in with this quality as we'll see. So just to recap a bit, let's remember that in the first for the first time that Pompeii was discovered, it was the 18th century. And one of the reasons why, and mainly, the city was discovered but then abandoned and recovered again was because of the scandalous erotic pictures that were found. They were just too much for the 18th century Europe. So they just took it away and said that this could not be. Many have to say with all the various digs and not that much control had um, have been disappeared and awesome or in hands of private collectors. We still have some for the public but we have to mention that some are not available. As a curiosity, in 1819, when the King Francis I of Naples visited the Pompeii exhibition at the National Museum with his wife and daughter, when he got to this part of the museum, he was so embarrassed by the erotic artwork that he decided to have it locked away in a secret cabinet only accessible to people of mature age and respected morals. Later, it was reopened, closed, reopened again, and then closed again during a, uh, about a uh, hundred years. It was open, closed, open, closed. And then it was made accessible at the end of 19, the 1960s finally. So what was, why do we have all this fuss about the art in Pompeii? Well, we'll start seeing about it today. We're going to start reminding also that we talked about the hostels in the town, that they could also be used as brothels and, well, Prostitution is called the oldest job you could in history. 
So it is not surprising to find a high demand in these big towns. Pompeii being a wealthy town couldn't be less and there were various popinae as we've seen, um, little brothels or hostels that would serve for both and we found about, they've found about 25 different places that were used as brothels but they also had one large one the build a building that was actually constructed for this specific purpose the others were just places that also served as this one called the lupanare meaning the wolf's den using lupa in feminine uh, meaning she wolf this was a common way to refer to prostitutes the lupanare had up to 10 rooms its own latrines remember having latrines private latrines in your house was a commodity and each room as we'll see had a stone bed covered with a mattress and all the walls were adorned with erotic pictures and on the top we have one erotic picture for each of the rooms one hypothesis is that these pictures were a bit of a showcase for the acts available or maybe their specialities to put it some way of each of the prostitutes that work in each of the rooms maybe it was also just to put into the mood we are not 100% sure but you had every room with a different picture on the top well despite we have to say despite the erotic nature of these images it has been suggested that they were just idolized versions of sex this wasn't really this they look really nice-ish and um, okay but it was idolized because the life of prostitutes uh, especially at the lupanare was far grimmer than the erotic images suggest uh, for instance just remember the picture of the room the chambers that where the prostitutes worked were windowless they were cramped really really small uncomfortable and only separated from the other room the main room or the corridor by a curtain so not even with privacy furthermore it has been suggested that most prostitutes in Pompeii were slaves normally of uh, oriental or Greek origin as they were involved in the sex trade and uh, sorry in the sex trade but also in the slave trade they were trained into being prostitutes and when that you were slave and you had this kind of training you did not have any real alternatives for the job for another job it would be very very difficult to achieve but if the girl's life wasn't that good we can we also know and we can see that the clients however seemed that they actually had a good time and we know this because of the graffiti that was left behind there are notes and carvings on the walls and just painted notes on the walls throughout all Pompeii giving us inside information of 
what people thought and how personally I'd say how people haven't changed that much. The brothel is not an exception. Here we have some examples. It has been suggested that there are over a hundred inscriptions on the walls of Lupanare and they are just typical notes you would find in probably any toilet or public space in a big town nowadays. For example, we have the first one above a bench outside the marine gate, just saying, if anyone sits here, let him read this first of all. If anyone wants, mm -hmm, he should look for a tease. She costs four sesterci. That wasn't that much. Then we have others like in the Lupinare, just typical, I was here on June 15th, Hermeros, uh -huh, here with Pliteros and Capis, Capisus. <laughs> These are the notes of ancient Romans that they left on the walls of brothels and the town. Underneath that one we have uh, Vicolumachia, small room of a possible brothel, where, oh, this one's a bit sad, is noted Vivius Restitutus slept here alone and missed his darling Urbana. That is sweet compared to the rest. And just as a last one, we have a note from the atrium of the House of the Large Brothel that says, Blondie has taught me to hate dark-haired girls. I shall hat them if I can, but I wouldn't mind loving them. I guess it's hate. Pompeian Venus Physica wrote this. How similar is it to just some teenage notes you will usually find in corners of a, a big town or in monuments? People have not changed an ounce in this aspect. I'm just continuing. Um, apart from the notes on the wall, let's point out that wealthy people generally did not visit brothels and um, not because they didn't want to use women, but because they could afford mistresses or slave concubines. So the notes that we just read were more likely to be those of just ordinary Romans that frequent brothels. We can go a bit more into the minds of just ordinary Romans that were probably passing through the town. Interestingly also, uh, the clients left in the Lupanare also left notes on the wall that have allowed archaeologists to work out the prices for the services. How curious is that? It uh, seems, for example, that two loaves of bread and half a litre of wine would actually enable a person to obtain the services of a prostitute. Quite a low price. We have to mention also that uh, buying a prostitute in Pompeii was cheap for the period we're talking about. And obviously the fees were not paid to the women working in the brothels but the brothel owner. So this did not make 
the um, situation of these women any better. And thanks to all this pricing, we actually do know, uh, for you to have an idea, that the low price prostitute earned three times more than an unskilled uh, urban labourer. It was relatively in, inexpensive uh, for an, a Roman male to buy the services of a woman. It was not a bad pay, but women, for obvious reasons, wouldn't go into this that easily, not even because of a good economic wealth that sometimes people end up in these cases. Uh, but this was quite risky and that's why normally it was only slaves. Uh, the economic status could be great during some time, but uh, as you got older, you got less money and your health issues. You didn't have protection, uh, sexually transmitted diseases were terrible for prostitutes throughout history and your life expectancy was shortened quite a lot. And well these the brothels obviously are the most obvious place where you'd have erotic art right? But in Pompeii uh, amongst other places there have been erotic art depictions found in houses. For example, there's an erotic painting uh, from a small cubicle leading off to the kitchen in one of the houses. There's also a room that there was a statue of uh, Priapus with a large phallus, phallus uh, in the house of Veti. And there's even in the suburban baths various pictures, erotic pictures depicting sex acts. These pictures, for example, the ones in the suburban baths, you have various hypotheses on why they were put there. Um, it's not clear. Some Authors say that they indicated that there were services for prostitutes on the upper floor of the bathhouse and this would be like an advert. There's other hypotheses that say that this was just decoration of joyful scenes. Well, it could be in Roman culture, but there's actually another theory from the archaeologist Luciana Giacobelli that I find very curious that she says that these erotic pictures were put into the suburban baths as a reminder of one of where one had left their clothes so you would have an idea of where you left your clothes as these pictures actually stick to your memory. So you would remember where you left your clothes depending on the erotic art you had near the locker. I find this one very amusing and uh, a curious way to put it. It could be, it could be. Uh, remember in history have many theories. Well this was just this overview on brothels and a part of history that is normally because of social morals taken away. This just comes to show us that Romans were maybe a bit more open-minded sexually but they were just regular folk humans like every one of us. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and see you in the next one.